True story, I just spent more than zero minutes looking for my copy of Yield. <laughs> Happy birthday, Yield. The album that saved my life, and I'm sure I'm not alone out there, and I thought we'd celebrate by giving Brain of Jay another go. Last time I attempted this years ago, I botched it sufficiently to warrant such an effort. So without any further ado, here is how to have a good time playing Pearl Jam's Brain of Jay. By the way, I'm calling this how to have a good time playing this song because there's a lot going on and there are times when you have to pick and choose. I'm taking most of this information from the Pink Pop 2000 uh, performance for two reasons. One, I love that performance. Two, that to me is the perfect balance between fresh on their minds and road tested. So if you're gonna be Mike, you're gonna be an open D tuning, which equals D, A, D, F sharp, so your G string's going down one half step. Your B string is going down one whole step to A. And your E string is down one whole step to D. D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. Open D tuning if you're gonna play Mike in your Pearl Jam tribute band. Open D tuning, of course, has the same three low strings, D, A, D, as drop D. So we're doing drop D power chords for the intro. We're going nine, eight, seven, seven, eight, nine, seven, nine, open. Then just, I <laughs> love how that low string just jangles away. Nine, eight, seven is the second half. Nine, eight, seven, seven, eight, nine, seven, nine, oh, nine, eight, seven. Man, I'm good at saying numbers fast. <laughs> Mystery of the Universe time. Listen to the album version and you'll hear a very high note in Mike's intro. It's the baby E string in the same frets. But the problem is if you bar everything, well, it's pretty clunky to do. And also I don't hear the B or the G string in the album version intro. There's no major third in that. What I do here is nine, 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 nothing, nothing, nine. And you can do the first three chords, but you can't really do the rest of it. So, mystery of the universe. You can add that high note when you can, if you want. But if you're gonna play Stone Gossard in your Pearl Jam tribute band, you're in standard tuning. Thank you, Stone. It's on the E string. Seven, six, five, five, six, seven, A five, E seven, open E string. And then of course, just like Mike, but two frets lower and only one string. Seven, six, five for the second half. things I love about this song is while Mike is playing his low D A D notes on his open low string, Stone is playing an open E string and if you get messy about it, perhaps the E and the A strings D A D and E aren't really notes that go together. The whole thing sounds a bit like a garbage disposal and it's supposed to. It's perfect. Thanks for joining me over here. I don't have access to my wah pedal over there. Mike of course keeps wailing away on his thing during the verse and Stone's verse part, I love it. Be here you go. <laughs> it's B and E strings, seventh fret, and just move your wah very slowly. You're just gonna hit quarter notes. On the record, he gets a little more varied with it. We're talking about the, uh, the B minor pentatonic scale, so you can do kind of whatever you want. Keep it simple. Mike's chorus is one of the big things I botched last time. What I didn't realize is that Jeff's bass is moving around and nobody else's power chords or chords are moving around. Mike is gonna be stuck on the D and the A string 10th fret the whole time and what he's gonna to add to it is B13 and G11 like this. <laughs> Right along with the vocal. Who wrote that line? Did Eddie write the doo doo or did Mike write it? 
Mystery of the Universe number two. Stone's chorus is very similar to Mike's. Remember, Mike's playing a drop D power chord on the 10th fret. Normally, that would be a D note on the E string, but because the E string is now a D string, it's really a C note. Mike is playing a C power chord, and Stone is playing a little bitty C minor chord, 8, 8, 8, and you can add 10 if you want. I'm going to, and the boop, boo he does as well. It's B, 11, and G, 10. I would have thought that the little mini solo at the tail end of the chorus would have been Stones, but apparently it's Mike's, and we're in Mike's tuning, so you're gonna be E string 13, 12, B 13, down to 10 if you like, or you can go to G13, whichever you like better. I like a more familiar pentatonic scale shape, right? So 13, 12, 13, down to 10, and then 13, 12, bend B13, and do that down to 10 move again if you like, and then same thing. just end on bending that B string. You can kind of do Mar Mark's, <laughs> sure, Mark's rhythm part and his solo part uh, if you don't want to give up the goose. I would say maybe not both the strings there, maybe just hang on the now low D string so it doesn't eat up all the sonic space for the solo, but you're gonna sacrifice the bend, but again, you're gonna keep all the rest of the action, so gotta use the G string. way you chose to do it you hit your whole big open chord that's what he did at pink pop i really like that it's again it's open d so your whole guitar is a big beautiful open d chord and then you get to do this e string two four two open as a pluck hammer on pull off pull off b2 open e g3 starts the same but ends on open E. And you can fill it up, I just realized this, you can fill it up all the way if you want because we've got the correct open chord going. Just strum gently. So you don't overtake the, the leads there. If you happen to be practicing your pentatonic shapes at this juncture in your guitar journey, Stone solos in B minor pentatonic. 7, 10, 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 10, 7, 10, and all the other B minor shapes, of course. If you know them, do your thing. last chorus, etc, etc, and here's one of the things I love most about Pearl Jam, they will throw a key change at you and you won't even realize it happened. The last outro is one fret higher than the intro, so instead of 9, 8, 7, etc, it's 10, 9, 8, and I didn't realize that happened on my last attempt, so I was fooled entirely. Same exact pattern. And that low open D power chord has even less to do with these chords. The garbage disposal effect. Which means I presume that Stone, of course, is doing his same thing, but one fret higher. So A, seven, six, and A string sixth fret. Listen to that, it's perfection. I'm recharged, are you recharged? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful. Happy birthday, Yield, and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.